Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to Parisno. Now, when we left off, we had defeated Centurion Octavius in Mortal Kombat and made our way back to Volderberg. Now, I know what you're thinking. This isn't Volderberg, is it? No, we are actually at Fornion because I decided that I wanted to do the Redwood Nation quest. Now, unfortunately, I do believe this requires us to be a vassal of the Redwood Nation, and as a result, that would require us to obviously give up all of our land. Well, technically not, if we did it in a strategic way. We would be able to defect while keeping all of our strongholds. However, I have grown to like the Valier clan rather considerably, so maybe... In the future, if the Redwood Nation decides to declare war against us, then of course we will make necessary modifications to our battle plan. But, as it stands at the moment, this is what this guy says. You are not a lord of the Redwood Nation. Don't think that I will tell you any of our secrets. And as you can tell, that obviously means that we are not a vassal of theirs. So that is very, very unfortunate indeed. I thought to myself, hmm, that would be a really nice thing to do. But it appears not. Now, do bear in mind that there is a quest also at the Parisnoan Ruins, which is, I do believe, between Crane and Amana. I do believe it's around here, so we could go there, and I think I might. So I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, so as I was making my way over to the Parisnoan Ruins, a band of sandwalkers decided to intercept us, and suffice it to say, I am absolutely unhappy about this. I really do not wish to attack these guys, but they decided that it would be a good idea to do so. So, we will be meeting their demands, I suppose, because they demanded that we give them coin for passing through their territory, which is, yeah, not going to happen anytime soon. So, we're just going to be leaving those guys to do whatever they wish. And we will be leaving the items as well. So as you can see, we are here. I might actually wait until daytime. Because I do prefer to explore things in the daytime. That's a better idea. And now we have a band of robbers following us too, which is excellent. So what we're going to do is something that you never see me do. And that is actually to save. Because the fellow that gave me the tip about heading into the prisoner in ruins did tell me that it may require some saving. Otherwise... There could be some bugs that are having some problems here. So, let's head in. You come to a seemingly abandoned fort, a relic of the past belonging to the old Parisnoan Empire. I do believe we've actually been in here before. Ah, this is the place that we were in beforehand, and I had to run all the way to the edge of the map to get out? Is that true? I do believe it is, because... Ah, yes. We came to the very top of this mountain, and I said to you, So, there's nothing in this map, is there? And, yeah, there didn't appear to be anything, because it might be that we need the quest as a Redwood Nation vassal to be able to even head in here, but, yes, I do believe that we will not be able to participate in this unless I am able to find something on the top of this mountain here, which is what I stated beforehand, I do believe, and I was unable to do just that. So, we might very well be in for some disappointment here, and we'll have to take on some Hakon vassals instead. Yes, it appears so. Hmm, that is unfortunate. Very unfortunate indeed, and as you can see, it says that we cannot leave now. So I will be cutting away, and I will walk to the very edge of the map, and then, of course, I will cut back once we are engaging, or indeed maybe besieging, a Hakon fief or vassal. Okay, so I decided that we will go for a siege. I was unable to find any vassals in the vicinity of the Parisno in ruins, so instead we are going to be attempting to lay siege to Samara Castle. Now that is going to be rather tricky, to say the least, because there are two vassals stationed in here, so if we are at all able to, I would really like to take those guys prisoner if possible. And as a result, we will be heading in and taking a look at our first ever Hakon Fief, I do believe. This reminds me of the Saranids. Oh my goodness, it must be the desert, of course. So, let's get our units into good positions here. Let's get our archers at the front. How many archers do we have? 35. That's a good balance. A very good balance indeed. 
So let's get our archers out the front here and see what we can do to eliminate the defenses in the nearby vicinity. Oh no, those crossbowmen are going to definitely teach us a lesson if we allow them to shoot us, as you can no doubt tell. Come on, take him out. No, how dare you. Oh my goodness, no. Okay, I think I might have to tell our units to charge in here. I don't believe we will be able to do this. Just myself, of course, with archery support. Okay, 42 damage from a headshot. That's rather impressive, to say the least. Okay, well, I'm going to be resting here, and no doubt... Oh, yes, there we go. Centurion Octavius has returned. A messenger rides up to you and tells you that a third legion centurion has rallied his soldiers and is now marching for war. Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't suppose we will be facing him around here very soon, or at least I hope not. Otherwise, he's going to have a very funny time. And... We are being interrupted by nine sandwalkers. Okay, well, I'll cut away while we are rejuvenating anyway, and I will see you once we are back into the siege, and hopefully not getting headshot once again. Okay, so heading into the siege once again, we are greeted by some rather thick fog and mist, which is definitely not something I want to see, although this is definitely going to improve our chances of winning this bout, because... I don't know whether it does, but fog and mist, I believe, have an effect on bolts and arrows streaming through the air. Or at least I hope that is the case anyway. I know it is the case with snow and rain, but not entirely sure about this. I am hopeful. Very hopeful indeed. Now, our Redwood Elites and our Zan Longbowmen are doing a very, very good job. And I am hopeful that they will continue to do so for the entirety of the siege. Now, I do need to be cautious of those crossbowmen up there. I want to make sure that we don't take any damage. Now, I would like to actually hit some of these guys, so maybe I should switch to my two-handed. Come on! Get in range! Yes, there we are. This guy is a beast. He knows what's up. Hack on, sharpshooter. And now I am being shot once again. Where am I being shot from, though? Interesting. Okay. Well, whatever the case, let's do it. I do believe we have enough space for us to fully charge in here with our infantry. Unfortunately, the ladder does appear to be quite thin, so we are going to have quite a few difficulties getting through here, I do believe. I'm actually looking to see where I can move to if I need to at some point. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Take that guy out. Thank you. Now maybe I could... No! Why did I jump? Why did I jump? That was a terrible idea. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's tell our infantry to come back, and I'll, I think we'll also tell our cavalry to come back as well, because I really want to get into the fight here, and it would be wonderful if we could. And we did appear to be losing quite a few of our units, which is definitely not something I want to see immediately. Oh no, a Divine Aetheling is up there! And it was killed. Ah, that's unfortunate, really. Oh my goodness. I must admit that I am actually looking forward to the DLC of Warband quite considerably, because I'm hopeful that they will reinvigorate the siege mechanics, because even though this ladder is actually quite a lot better than the native ladders that might actually be as thin as this, then hopefully that will make it better, make it even wider in the DLC. I would hope so, at least. But if not, then so be it. But... Oh my. Okay. I have a lot of HP, but unfortunately enough, it's not probably going to be enough. Let's do this. Yes. Take out the heavy footman. Take out the footman and hopefully not get shot by that crossbowman there. Xi Jin is being shot rather considerably by him. And I'm hopeful that they will not take us out. Let's do this. Yeah, there we go. Take that guy out. No. Don't push us back. We will not fall back, even if I get taken out. Oh yes. Let's do it. Come on. Take him down, guys. We need to get rid of this guy. The guy with the incredibly good helmet. Yes, there we are. Heavy footman taken out. And another one. They are falling like flies before us. Exactly what we want to see right here. I must remember not to press the space bar. Otherwise, we are definitely going to be having issues. Jetpack issues. Oh, my. Okay, come on. Take out this guy. And why did I press space? Ooh. I'm used to pressing space when I want to get a nice jump and bash or jump and slash on, but yes, it appears 
That will not be the case this time around. Yes, we are able to penetrate their lines. Excellent. That is not something we've done in quite some time. And then I got taken out by a Hakon Imperial Spearman. Really? Wow. Okay. I was not expecting that, that's for sure. But, as you can plainly see, there aren't many crossbowmen remaining in their nest over here. So I am actually very thankful about this. I am also thankful that I will be able to control our units after I am dead. Because that is, of course, going to make it so that we can charge in our archers if we so desire. And, believe it or not, we can actually reposition them on the map as well, which is really very nice. Hopefully we'll be able to do that so that some of our archers can target these crossbowmen here. And maybe even target some of the units that are on the battlements. That would be very, very cool indeed. But, considering they're not able to do that at the moment, I am probably just going to be charging them in here. Some of them have some very good melee weapons, and I am hopeful that we'll be able to get them to support these units right here so they can shoot from the side like this. This angle right here would provide some very nice damage from our archers right there. And so far we are doing a very good job. 112 units have been taken out. Only 8 of our units have fallen to the might of the Hakon Empire so far. Now I must mention, as I was resting and rejuvenating at Samara Castle, we were greeted by the news. Well, I don't really want to say greeted because it's not really good news, but it's okay, I suppose. But the Zand Dynasty and the Valahir clan has now degraded in their agreement to be formed in an alliance. So we are no longer allied with the Zand Dynasty, but we do still have a defensive pact, so it is still relatively good. However, if it is starting to degrade even further, then I will start to worry that they are going to decide to betray us. That would not be very nice at all. However, saying that, one of their fiefs is actually very close by to Valahir clan territory, and I think it might actually be a good idea to take that to further secure our lines and indeed our borders between our opponents, of course. So there it is, 12 renown and 43 morale, a very nice sum indeed for such a small work, and unfortunately we were not able to take any of those guys prisoner, which would have been lovely. However, we are now able to take quite a few very good units. Demon Priest, for example. Very nice to see one of those guys. Some Drakken Cavalry right there, and we can get some Praetorian Guards, I like those a lot. And what else do we want to get here? Well, I suppose we could take some Lansconnects, and we could take some... Hmm... Well, I suppose that. That will be it. And now we just need to take as many prisoners as we can. Hopefully we can sell those for a tidy profit, and then we'll be right in the money. Even though we do currently have quite a lot in our treasury, you never know when that can diminish due to war time. We are at war with the Hakon, of course. I am going to be asking no rewards here, because I'm a little bit worried about garrisoning this particular castle, because it is so far away. Look at this. Dramug Castle is the closest to Samara Castle, and, well, I don't believe we will be able to defend this if the Hakon decide to attack, but, seeing as I am already here, I do believe we will be able to defend without any problems whatsoever. So, before we cut away here, I'm going to be leveling up quite a few of these units. As you can see, I actually took some Landeers out of the garrison at Voldeberg while I was still there, and decided to level them up into Drengars. These will eventually, hopefully, become Herseers and, of course, Huskarls. So let's get another Heavy Marksman as well, and Agnair Stormcloak has advanced in level. So let's get him another point in Agility, and get him some more Athletics? No. Let's get him some more in Shield. Yes, that will make him an even greater beast in Siege Warfare. That's exactly what we want to see right there. Now, as you could probably tell in the last siege that we just did at Samara Castle, Antiope was getting a huge amount of kills, and she's only level 21 with 7 power draw, so I am really thankful that we were able to recruit her. Zyra is actually not getting any kills so far, but hopefully due to the group experience, she will be able to level up soon. Lady Ella, the similar 
thing going on with her. She doesn't have the good enough gear really yet to be able to do much. So, without further ado, I will be waiting here for some time, paying 40 dinars every single day, and hopefully one of the Hakon vassals will turn up and we will show them the true meaning of defense. Okay, so as you can probably see, we are starting to have some rather considerable morale issues, and if I do not find any vassals soon, or at least if no vassals turn up to attack us, then we are definitely going to be having quite a few issues with, well, should we say, losing a lot of our valued troops. So instead, what I will be doing is cutting away, or at least I will be ending this episode off here, and I know, a very short episode indeed, I do apologize for that, I really wanted to record for a lot longer, but I have taken a quick look around Samara Castle, and the only enemy units from the Hakon Empire I can currently see are actually... Well, just patrols, so it's not great, is it? Not great at all. So I'm actually quite disappointed with that fact, and hopefully in the next episode we will have some Hakon vassals turning up here to teach us a lesson. Or at least I hope that will be the case anyway. So now I have leveled everyone up. Lady Ella has leveled, gained a level indeed, as well as Alden, which is excellent. We have quite a lot of prisoners, so I will be heading back to Volderberg. Samara Castle already has 40 units in here, including some Huskarls. Unfortunately, I'm not able to pull the Huskarls and Herseers out of there to join our army, but so be it. I will be heading back to Volderberg, maybe Freising as well. Check out to see whether I can find a ransom broker, hopefully get a little bit more cash. And then if Samara Castle comes under siege, then I will start the next episode there. So, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.